Hi, this is section 2.3, characterizations of invertible matrices. Now what we want to try to do is put a lot of this stuff that we've been doing together. And so we're going to look at these, this theorem 8 and talk about all these things that are equivalent statements under what we have. So first of all, if we start with a square matrix, then the following statements are equivalent. That is, for a given A, the statements are all either true or all false. So if we say that A is true, then the rest of these are all true. If A is false, then the rest of these are all false. Similarly, if J is false, all the rest are false. Why don't you read through these and see if you have any questions, bring those to class. I'm going to let you read those, though because I don't want to go through all of them. So if we have examples, we're going to go look at the examples down here. Use the least amount of calculations to determine if the following matrices are invertible. So all you have to do is check each one of these things, uh, or one of them, and if one of them is false, then our matrix is not invertible. If one of all these things is true, then our matrix is invertible. So we can check with that. Now really, I think that you should be doing this all yourself, so you should not follow along with me, really. You should go try each one of these and see if you can figure out if they are invertible or not, and then come back and, and see if you are correct or not. So please pause this and go ahead and do all these problems. So for number one, number one, wow, what do we do? We just by observation. What's true about row 1 as compared to row 2? Well, they are multiples of each other. So that straight away, we know that we are not going to have n pivot positions. This will not reduce down to the identity matrix because we're going to get a whole row of zeros. When that happens, we can say that A is not invertible because we do not have the identity matrix, which this is row equivalent to. All right? So that's what we're going to write for this one. So I just needed a quick quick mental calculation for this one in order to make it work. Now try number two. Number two, do we have the same situation? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like we have multiples or anything like that. So it looks like we will probably end up with an identity matrix if we row reduce this. So it's just two quick steps. I can show that that would be equivalent to the identity matrix right here, and then I'm going to be in business. Okay, so look at number three. What's your initial inclination with number three? Are all three of these vectors, if I look at the column vectors, are they going to form R3? Well, the answer would be no, because we do have the zero vector in the middle here. With that zero vector, we are not going to get a linearly independent set. And so we're going to get a dependent set. And so the column vectors are linearly dependent. Therefore, A is not invertible. Now, you also could say that the columns of A don't span Rn, so then A is not invertible as well. What about this one? What do you notice about the, well, I don't know, what do you notice? Can you tell if I take column 1 plus column 2, what happens? Well, if I do column 1 vector plus column 2 vector, then I'm going to get column 3. And so what happens then is that we are linearly dependent again. If we're linearly dependent, then A is not invertible. For number five, I just did row reduction. I don't know if there's a simpler way to do this, but I did a row reduction, and I can stop right here. Why I can stop right there is because A has N pivot positions. If A has N pivot positions and N by N, then that's going to be row equivalent to the identity matrix. Therefore, A is invertible for number five. Six, I don't think we have to do much with because we don't have a n by n matrix. It's not square. 
So then we are not invertible. Number five, true or false? Kind of. Can a five by five matrix be invertible when its columns do not span R5? Why or why not? All you have to do is look at H up above. And with H, the columns of A span Rn. Well, if they don't span Rn, then we don't have a invertible matrix. So this is, A is not invertible. Now we're number eight. If the equation AX is equal to C is inconsistent for some C and Rn, what can you say about AX equal to zero? Well, we kind of have to look above, but if we see right here that our G, that we have to be, AX equal to B has to have at least one solution for each B in Rn, and so it already told us that we're inconsistent. If we're inconsistent, then this is not true. If this is not true, then AX equal to zero has more than the trivial solution. So AX equal to zero has more than the trivial solution. In fact, it shouldn't have the trivial solution. I think I'm saying that right. All right, so this just gives you an idea of how to put all these things together. There's a lot of them, but I think that you know we've been building this from the beginning, so hopefully this is sticking with you. And you're figuring out, okay, what's happening with the columns, if they span, if they don't span, and all those kinds of things. This is all the stuff that's going on, and we'll actually add to this as we go. All right, I hope that you were able to get these and find different ways, maybe different than me, and hopefully more efficient for some of them. But uh, if you're not, then you hopefully learned a little bit with it. Thanks a lot. This is 2.3. Take care.